Hello, my name is Fleur and I'm the EMEA Technical Presales Team Lead. And today I'm going to show you how to import IFC files in BricsCAD BIM. The focus will be on the new IFC import dialog, new in BricsCAD v24.2, and how this dialog will dramatically simplify the task of importing IFC files. Let's dive straight in. Here you see the IFC model we are going to import in BricsCAD BIM. Let's now open BricsCAD BIM and create a new BIM project. This is simply done on the start page by clicking New Projects, choosing a project name and location. You can also choose the template in which you will start your drawing. In this project, we will now be able to import the IFC we just saw. Simply call the import command from the command line or go to the BricsCAD icon and find the import button. Next, I'll browse to the IFC file I want to import and hit open. And there we go. If the file extension is .ifc, BricsCAD will immediately show me the new IFC import settings dialog. Now, it's easier than ever to control the different IFC import settings, all from, this, from within this new dialog. First of all, we have some profiles to choose from. These will contain a combination of different import settings according to some of the most requested ways of importing IFC files. For instance, when choosing structural elements only, you'll see that a bunch of different filters on BIM type are applied automatically to make sure we only import structural elements and no non-structural elements like windows and doors. Similarly, the MEP elements only will filter out only the BIM classifications that are related to MEP or the architectural elements only will filter out only those elements that are related to architectural elements. Next up is geometry only. Geometry only will also change a setting here below in the profile settings. We will come back to that later. But in short, geometry only will import almost all geometric BIM classifications, but it will bring them in as regular solids without the BIM data attached to them. But now let's choose structural elements only and see how it looks. As you can see now, only the structural elements have been imported. For instance, there are no windows and doors in this project, nor is there furniture, but only the structural elements, which we wanted to see were imported. Also note that when importing only a subset of uh, BIM classifications, the importing mechanism will exclude upfront all these BIM categories you don't need to import, speeding up your import, because in this case, windows and doors were not included in the import. You can now start to model with these elements just like native BricsCAD elements. But in this case, let's do the import again with some new settings. So let me delete the elements we imported and launch the import command again. Choose the same file, but now let's go for some new settings. This time, let's go for the default imports, which will import all the BIM types, but we will change some settings. Let's assume, for instance, I only want to import the spaces because I'm only interested in the surface areas and parameters of all rooms. This because I need to calculate the amount of flooring, paint and skirting board that I need to order. To do that, click inside the filter line and check off all the types that you don't want to see. In this case, I'll just check off everything. Then, easily check back on the elements you want to see. You can filter on certain 
uh, element names. But if we look closely, actually we wanted to import all the spatial structural elements. So then simply select the entire spatial structural elements drop down, and only these elements will be imported now. Also note that when you change the default import, you will see that it has a modified next to its name. This means that your default import was now modified. And next time you launch the import command, you'll be again in this saved state, which is modified. However, remember that you can always go back to the default import by selecting the profile. But let's check how the import looks by hitting import. As we can see, we only see the imported space volumes. If we select one of these volumes and we go to the properties, we can see that a lot of properties from the source application were imported into Brickscat BIM. However, all the way at the bottom of the properties panel, you will also find the space base quantities. These quantities can be used in the bill of materials to list the surface area of the floor and walls, as well as the net parameter of the room. So let's do that. Let's make a quick excursion to the bill of materials for BIM. Go to your BIM project that we established uh, in the beginning of this demo. Click on your files tab and go to the plus button and say import bill of materials. In this case, I already had set up my BOM template. So I will navigate to that template, which is called spaces.bom. And this will list all the quantities of all my spaces. So I now see that it was successfully imported to my project. And once I double click on the spaces.bom, the template will open up and will be filled in with all the quantities from this project. You can see that in the basement, we have 14 rooms and these are the different properties. We aggregated them to list the sum of all the floor areas on that story. And here we also aggregated the column of the height of the rooms to list the maximum height of the room. Next, we can summarize all these values to quickly see how much flooring, paint, or skirting boards we need to order. But now let's return to the IFC import. Let's look at the import all profile now, but exclude the spaces this time. Then let's check the profile settings. If you hover over the little eye behind the setting, you'll get a tooltip that helps you understand what this setting does. In case of the first setting, import BIM data, it's pretty obvious that when checking this one off, only the geometry will be imported and not the BIM data. In case of the second setting, import parametric behavior of components, when windows and doors in the IFC file are stored in a parametric way, they'll come in as parametric windows in BricsCAD 2. So you can still adjust their parameters. In case of the third setting, explode spatial structure to XREF, the different stories of the building will each come in as separate external DWG references that are then referenced into one master file as BIM XREF. This allows you to split up larger projects in multiple lighter files. And when exporting, you can still choose to combine them in one IFC file again, or keep the export into multiple IFC files. The fourth setting, import BRAP geometry as meshes, will, just like the name suggests, import the IFC geometry that is defined as a BRAP, also known as a boundary representation, inside the IFC file. And it will do that as meshes instead of as solids. This is good for having a lighter underlay, but if you still want to edit the geometry of the BIM elements later, you will want to leave this setting unchecked. The fifth setting, import IFC meshes as subdivision meshes, will import IFC geometry defined as meshes in the IFC file, as subdivision meshes instead of polyphase meshes. 
This can be useful as polyphase meshes have a limitation on the amount of vertices and faces they can hold. The sixth setting, use profile from databases with corresponding geometry, will match profiles with similar look as the one in the BricsCAD database to the actual profiles already defined in that database. The final setting to discuss is the model origin. In an IFC file, three types of locations can be defined and any of these points can be used to place the model in the world coordinate system or WCS of a BricsCAD file. The first is the IFC global coordinate system in WCS origin. The origin is the 000 point of the world coordinate system. So in this case, the uh, global coordinate system will be mapped to that 000 point. Notice that when models or entities are located far from the origin in a small unit system, the values of the distances can become very large, and this is often undesired, as the computer and BricsCAD might experience some rounding errors in this case. Hence, you typically rather would want to choose IFC project location or IFC site location, as these generally will be closer positions to the model of your building. And in this case, the IFC project location or the IFC site location will be placed in the WCS of BricsCAD. In the beginning, always IFC project location was used and you saw the model was quite far from the origin already. So let's see what the other model origin options give us. Let's choose for the IFC global coordinate system to WCS mapping and see where the model is located now. If we now zoom out, we see that the model is located even further from the origin than before. But let's delete this model and try the IFC site location import. Just hit the import button again. And we see we again come into the import all modified. We just simply switch to IFC site location, import the drawing again. And we will see that in this case, the model will be located very close to the WCS, which is more convenient to model with and which has less chances on rounding errors. As such, we covered all the IFC import settings. Of course, you can still model, cut sections and do operations with the imported models. And you can still export to IFC in BricsCAD BIM too. But for more information on that, I gladly point you to my breakout on interoperability that was part of our v24.1 release. If you want to learn more on the specific v24.2 enhancements, on the other hand, then feel free to stick around and check out the breakouts of my colleagues. They will mostly cover other BricsCAD license levels, but all of these additions were additions made to the v24.2 BricsCAD release. Until the next one.